So what we are going to do now as a demo is we are going to create a custom VPC. We are going to create subnets that is public and private. We are also going to create an internet gateway so that our public subnets can talk to the internet. We will ping Google or uh, set up a web server and try to access our web server through the public subnets. And we will also set up the routing table so that all the traffic goes in and out. And we will also set up the web security group and database security group and see whether we can reach the private server uh, without uh, internet access and how to do that. I am in my VPC dashboard now and I am under the VPC section, your VPCs and you can see here uh, there are two VPCs but the second one is created by me and the first one is uh, given to me by Amazon by default. Almost all the new accounts will come with the default VPC in all the regions. So let us not go ahead and disturb any of that. Let us go ahead and create our own VPC. So let us going to click on create and here I'm going to say what is the name tag? I'm going to say VPC demo and then I'm going to give a CADR range which is going to be helpful for us very easily. So 10.81/16. You can go ahead and choose any valid IP address range here and leave this as default. We don't need IPv6. We can do all the traffic routing with IPv4 itself. But Amazon has lately started supporting IPv6 also. Um, but let us stay with IPv4. Click on create. So that is all it takes to create the IP address range that will be provided to us. So you can see here it is created and let me filter it so that let us focus our attention there. And you can see here this is my IP address range. If I go to CADR blocks the same thing will be shown here. And if I go to tags my uh, VPC tagging us there. I'm just going to add one more tag here so that I will collect all the resources in one place. So the other thing that I wanted to highlight is DNS resolution and you can see a DNS resolution is yes and a DNS host name is no. This means that any resource that is launched in my VPC currently will not have a host name. So how do I enable that? You go to actions and then you go to edit DNS host names and click on S here and click on save and I will be changing the value to S here. And once again, if you don't want DNS resolution again, you can go here and make it as no your DNS resolution will also be changed to no. Uh, sometimes in corporate, they don't need this because they will have their own DNS servers. So you will be expected to set this as no values. So the first step is done. We have chosen our CIDR range and we have created our VPC. The next step is creating our subnets. So let us go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to filter it by VPC demo so that we can focus only on the ones that we are creating. Create subnet. And I'm going to say AZ1, okay, public subnet AZ1A. And I'm going to make sure that I'm choosing my VPC here, that is VPC demo. And you can see the IP address range is also 10.81/16. And I'm going to ensure that because I named my VPC as 1A, I'm going to put this in 1A now. And my CADR block is going to be something like this is going to give me about 256 IP address in 1A. So let us go ahead and click on create. Oh, I forgot a slash here. Click on create. So in total, my VPC has about 65,000 IP addresses. Uh, but if you can see here, I have created a very small subnet which is going to provide me about 251 IP addresses in my public subnet. So likewise, I'm going to create one more subnet called as private. I'm going to call it just because I'm calling it private doesn't mean it is going to be private. It depends upon where I'm going to attach my internet gateway that is going to decide whether I'm in private or public. So 1B goes into 1B and then 10.81. I'm just going to check whether I put in one there. So this one will become two and slash 24. So I have created two subnets, one in each availability zone. If you notice, 
So my public is in 1A and my private is in 1B. I can go ahead and create any combination also. I can go ahead and say, for example, create another subnet. And say private subnet for AC 1A also. And then for 1A, I'm going to say it is going to be 10.81.3.0.0/24, and I'm going to click on create. So this way, both the availability zones will have one public and one private. I'm just going to create one more private for uh, public for uh, 1B. Public subnet AC 1B. Yeah. 10.81.4.0 uh, slash 24. So I'm just going to sort it by uh, IP address range. So you can see here that is uh, two in each availability zones. So my public availability zone, I mean, one A has one private subnet and one public subnet. Likewise, availability zone B has one private subnet and one public subnet. And the way I have set it up is my odd number series, uh, or uh, that is the third octet, the odd number series are going to be in one A availability zone and even number series are going to be in one uh, B availability zone. So if, if something goes wrong, there is a logical organization. I can quickly identify which subnet uh, that resource is going to be part of. If somebody says 10.82, 81.2.45, uh, then I know that it is in availability zone one B. And uh, if it is a number series of two, it is going to be in a private subnet. So you just have to have some logical organization before you go ahead and decide your VPCs. So the second step of creating a subnet is also completed then I'm going to come and create an internet gateway. We'll come to routing tables, but before that, let us create an internet gateway. All you have to do is create IGW for demo VPC. Click on create and by default, it will be detached and we need to attach it to our VPC. I'm going to click on attach and only one that is not attached with any IGW is listed here. Go ahead and click on attach. And I'm going to add my routing table for my IGW now. So under routing tables, I'm going to filter it by my demo VPC. So did I make a mistake? VPC hyphen demo. Okay, by default, you can see here there's only one routing table. And if I go to routes section, this is the default route, which ensures that all the traffic destined within this VPC will be communicating to each other. And as of now, uh, there are no subnets associated with this uh, routing table but since this being the main routing table the local routing will work even though there is no subnets associated so let us go ahead and create our custom routing table now rtb for internet traffic and i'm just going to ensure that i'm choosing my vpc click on create and let us synchronize as of now there are no routes are there but let us go ahead and create our route first edit and i'm going to add another route saying destination is internet for me and for internet traffic i'm going to choose an internet gateway so any traffic destined for this ip address send it to this gateway so why should i associate it any public subnet any resource in the public I want to communicate to the internet. So I'm going to associate it with my public subnets now. So I'm going to choose public subnet 1A as well as a public subnet from 1B as well. So this way any resource here and here can send and receive traffic to the internet. Okay, now this is done. So we have seen VPCs, we have seen subnets, we have seen routing tables, how to set it up. We have seen internet gateways. So we are just going to skip a little bit on the options that are given here and we are going to jump to security groups now. And once again, I'm just going to filter by my, uh, my spelling. Oh, 
okay by default there is one security group created for you and that is going to have an internal allow all traffic that is any traffic originating from my security group and in all ports it is allowed so as of now there is no other inbound allow ports uh, so i cannot connect it in port 22 or 80 or any ip address so if i want to allow it i need to add those rules here so how do i do that go ahead and say port ssh and say ssh i am i can have a very restrictive ip address here saying give my ip address but in this case for demo purpose 0.0, .0 is fine but in production what you will do is you will go ahead and create your uh, corporate ip address uh, range or your enterprise uh, ip address range here so this is not production configuration at all so don't put it 00, .0 for internet access for ssh traffic and if you are going to windows server what you do is you go ahead and do rdp and copy the same ip address range here so if i want to have set up a web server i will need 80 also to access so this is how you create multiple rules and then click on save that's it done there you don't have to go ahead and set an outbound rule by default all outbound rule is allowed to internet also the reason for that is only if it comes inbound your outbound rule is applied and inbound we are giving very restrictive rules and everything that is not matching here is denied so we don't have to worry about outbound being open at all so i have set up my security group and uh, what i've done is i've edited the default one itself let us not go ahead and do it this way what i will do is i'm going to create an uh, web security group and I'm going to add the same rules there so let us go ahead and do that web sg and click on create so under web sg let us go ahead and add some inbound rules ssh and I want to give http also and I'm going to give internet access. So click on save. And I'm also going to create an, a private security group. I'm just going to click on that and then say DBSG. That is database security group. I'm just using short forms here. You can go ahead and write any name that you are comfortable with. They're very elaborate names or short forms. So in DB, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say allow traffic only from my web so port ssh and http allow it from my web security group only all i have to do is go ahead and choose this web security group that comes up here and then what i will do is i'll also allow ping traffic icmp is that tcp So we should be able to ping this server from public security group. And I'm just going to ensure ping is enabled here as well. Because if I want to do some testing of whether the server is reachable, I just want to do it that way. I can ping from both the sides now. Okay, now we have done our security group also. If I go to NACLs and filter it for our security group, PPC hyphen demo and you can see here there is a one NACL that is the default one that is configured there and by inbound rule all traffic is allowed here because it, it's expecting you to do it at security group level if you want to go ahead and customize it and modify it all you have to do is edit add another rule I would say 200 and then put in an IP address and choose whether allow or deny and remember I have to do both inbound as well as outbound it says very clearly allow inbound traffic because initials are stateless you need to create your inbound and outbound it's almost the same way that you do it here also the rules are there and it will execute from the lowest first and goes all the way up and you can decide which subnets you are going to associate with uh, which uh, NACLs you can have different NACLs and associate certain subnets and you cannot have one subnet having multiple NACLs it automatically gets uh, overwritten if I create another one and associate this one, it will disappear from the default one. So now we have set up our custom VPC. It is all ready for us to go ahead and launch some servers and see whether we can go ahead and connect to it. So I'm just going to go to my EC2 service now to start two servers, one in public and one in private and see whether we can connect to them to the internet or privately. 
so we saw ec2s already so let us go ahead and skim over the things amazon linux default configuration here and here is the interesting part i'm going to customize this field also today i'm going to choose my vpcs as my custom vpcs and the first server that i'm going to start is i'm going to put it in my public subnet so if you give descriptive names it makes it very easy when you're going and consuming it in other services so public subnet 1a and I, I would like a public IP address so that I can connect to it from the internet and I would like an IAM role also so that I can pick some files from my S3 bucket. So click on add storage, nothing here, I'm just going to add a couple of tags. So next is the interesting part create security group if you choose the existing security group it will go ahead and list the ones that you just now created i'm going to choose web security group port 22 for me to connect and port 80 for internet traffic good let us go ahead and launch and i'm going to launch one more instance now and i'm going to launch it in the private security group i mean private subnet so I'm just going to say launch more like this. And I'm just going to change the instance details here. Uh, all I'm going to change is uh, going to change the subnet and make sure I'm going to choose the other availability zone and private subnet. And remember that even if I give a public IP address here, it doesn't make any sense because it doesn't have internet traffic. Uh, so I'm just going to show you enable it and and I will also put the code also. I'm just going to leave it as it is, but this code will not be installed and this web server will not be running. And how we are going to demonstrate is we'll put this IP address that gets allocated here in the browser, but we will not be able to reach that server at all. So storage next. I'm just going to change this into private in 1B. And I'm going to change the security group also. I'm just going to put it into the DB security group now. And remember the inbound rules, it gives me a nice warning. You can saying that rules with source of blah, blah, blah is uh, not recommended. We recommend a more secure one. Launch and launch. So we should have two servers now, one in public and one in private. So I'm just going to select this. So the public server should have come up online by now. So now my servers have come online and I can access the public server by putting the URL in my browser. But if I go ahead and choose my private server's public IP address, remember we chose a public IP address. But if I go ahead and put it in my browser, it won't work. So I've just taken this uh, 13.127. This public IP address is associated with this uh, a private server. And if I go ahead and put it in my browser, it keeps spinning. That means that there is no way that this public IP address can reach my private servers, although it has an IP address. My security groups ensure that uh, the traffic can only come in from my uh, web security group. You can see here, if I click on my view inbound rules, it says that uh, port 80 and port 22 are to be coming only from this web security group.